campaign is my pleasure to introduce to the brother Berichevsky from Krakow, from the Institute of Technology. He's a computer scientist, specialist in university theory, who is a particular interest in uh, computational social choice. And we have been in the Southern Gate Council in Liverpool and actively cooperating. Thank you. Um, so this talk is uh, titled about finding a collective set of items. Uh, and in so, but in some sense, it will be about multi-winner elections. So elections where we choose uh, several people. So since it's about elections, it shows some, you can't see, but this is actually me uh, after I was trying to run for president of Poland. But actually, uh, uh, it's from, uh, from uh, election related uh, promotional movie that we had to make, but anyway. Uh, the topic of the talk is multi-winner elections. So first of all, what are multi-winner elections? And there are, uh, one, of the, one of the findings that we had actually with, uh, with Arkady and with, with the co-authors uh, of this work is that multi-winner elections are quite different from single-winner elections in that you really have to think what you're choosing. So maybe you're choosing a parliament. If you're choosing a parliament, it's a you know, it's complicated process. Uh, there are maybe parties involved. There are candidates with different uh, programs. One thing that you, that you really have to care about is proportional representation. So every voter should be somehow represented in the parliament. So maybe the majority should have the, the say on uh, what's the law, but every voice should be heard. So when you're, when you're choosing a parliament, this is the principle uh, that you need to follow. And Maybe you're running a company, and maybe you need to hire some people, maybe even it's a university. And if a university is uh, hiring, uh, then maybe you'll get 100 or 200 or 300 applications. You certainly will not invite all these people to give interviews and give talks. Maybe you need to do some shortlisting. And then, you know, members of the faculty, they all have preferences on who is the best person to, in, to, to hire, uh, but based on their preferences, maybe at least you can you can uh, shortlist 10 people that you can invite. And this is a multi-winner election as well. And it's governed by very different laws than this uh, parliamentary election. So here, uh, one example is that if you have two similar candidates, then maybe both of them should be invited uh, to give a talk. Uh, both of them should be shortlisted or both of them should be not listed. Uh, but if there are two similar candidates, uh, maybe we don't need both of them in the parliament. One of them already represents people well enough. And uh, this is actually even more true uh, in another example, which is actually the focus of this talk, uh, which is somehow resource allocation uh, with the example of choosing movies. So the, the running example for, uh, for a big part of this talk is the following problem. Uh, we have an airline, and this airline can put only several movies uh, on the entertainment system of the plane. You're flying transatlantic, so I have a... On, on, Apparently on, uh, on Saturday I have a 19 hour flight from um, Auckland to Dubai. I really hope there's a landing in between because the plane is not supposed to fly this long. But um, of course, uh, you have to entertain yourself somehow and uh, the company has some choice of movies it can put on the system. And here we have, uh, we have a really uh, poor system that only fits two movies and we have a choice out of four. And the setting we have is the following. We have, let's say, four possible passengers, or four passengers, or maybe four groups of passengers that you somehow want to please. And each of them expresses some, some value of the movie that they have. So uh, later on, we will explain the meaning of these uh, utilities, these values. Right now, they're completely unnormalized. Uh, well, actually, they are normalized in the sense that uh, if uh, the green lady here likes the Batman movie with value 10, it means that she really likes it about three times as much as the uh, red guy likes the Superman movie. So they're expressed in the same uh, units, but other than that, uh, so far we put no requirements on them. Uh, so if you were to choose movies for the, for the plane, and this is the data that you have, you have to come up with some sort of procedure to pick this. And what can you do? So okay, the, the most basic thing you can do is maybe let's just sum total utility and pick the most appreciated movies. So if we do that, Batman gets 19. So if you sum up 10 plus 0 plus 7 plus 2, it's 19. 
uh, total utility for Superman is even less, it's 14. And it turns out that uh, Woody Allen and the cartoon get 24 and 20. So okay, that's, that's a very nice thing. Uh, they have highest utility. You're very well justified, except your customers are pretty damn unhappy. Because the green lady, well, she likes Woody Allen and cartoon the worst. So she's going to be completely bored on her flight. On the other hand, uh, well, the same is actually true for the, the red guy. He's got two almost worst possibilities. Uh, whereas uh, the orange guy, well, he doesn't care about cartoon at all, but he loves Woody Allen. He'll just keep watching that forever on the flight. And uh, the pink lady gets two of her favorite choices. So you could say it's completely unfair. You know, of course, you, you could find some justification. And as I actually said, that top u summing up utilities is a nice, th nice thing, but you know, two people will be completely bored on their flight, and two people will be quite happy. So how about we pick a good movie for everyone? Everyone should get something. And in this case, it's actually quite possible. So if we choose Batman and Woody Allen, well, Batman is, gives uh, the green lady, it's her favorite movie. The, the red guy, it's also his favorite movie. They're perfectly happy watching Batman. And for the orange guy, Woody Allen, 12. OK, the purple lady, okay, she could have a better choice, but I mean, it's really very close. Uh, so this way, we can pick something good for someone. We somehow have a representative movie for every member uh, uh, of the well, passenger group. And actually, uh, what I told you here is known as chamberlain Courant uh, proportional uh, representation uh, voting system. And you know, it seems like it's a pretty good thing. I'll tell you some bad things about it later, but, uh, but it's a relatively good idea. So you, know, if you, you could do that, and you know, at least everyone watches one movie, and it's fine. But what if you have a better understanding of your customers? Uh, what if? You know that uh, people watch movies, but uh, with, you know, it's a, I said, 19 hour long flight. It's probably more than one movie. So with some probability P, a customer chooses to watch a movie, the passenger, and with probability one minus P, he just stops, falls asleep, doesn't watch movies anymore. So then uh, the probability of watching no movies is one minus P. So we can essentially cancel this factor out. One movie gets P times one minus P, two movies get P squared times 1 minus p. Uh, so then, uh, of course, your model would be expected, util uh, expected uh, utility of each passenger. So you would want to pick uh, the movies that maximize the expected utility in this model. And now the question is, OK, that's, that's, these are reasonable models. They're very nice. Uh, we can study each of them separately. And maybe, we, maybe we'd better allocate our time on doing something more general. Uh, so the next thing we would like to do is to somehow uh, find a framework that gets all these things together. And it turns out that there is a very nice mathematical formalism that gets us exactly that. And these are, uh, it's called uh, OWA operators, so ordered weighted averages. So let's look at that. It's a very simple concept and, and very powerful one. Uh, so it's, one to, to, it's nice to know about it. Uh, so these are generalized average operators. The way they work, well, we start with some, so we will be picking k movies. Uh, so we start with a sequence of k numbers. These are, imagine that these are the utilities that you get for particular uh, k movies. So for, and uh, the first step in applying an OWA operator is to sort these numbers. So you sort from the best to the worst. So for example, if the, you picked uh, these k movies and the utilities were, were 31752, after sorting you get 75321. Okay, this is the first step in applying the uh, OWA operator. Then your OWA operator itself uh, is a vector of numbers, typically between 0 and 1, but this is not a requirement, uh, and, and we don't assume it. And uh, what you do is you take a simple product of these, uh, the sorted sequence of utilities and the operator, and you get, a, you get some value. Now, why is this interesting? Why is it nice? Well, if you take the OWA operator to be just 1 over k, you get arithmetic average. So do we have uh, some sort of sequence to one? We don't require that. I mean, it's nice mathematically to have it, but, uh, but we don't require that. So it's, uh, it's much easier to interpret this thing economically if, if they sum up to one, because somehow, somehow that's, that's a nice thing to have. Uh, to some extent, we're, uh, in this talk, I'll be focused on uh, computational properties. And for that, it doesn't matter. I can multiply these by the same number, and I get uh, 
or I can, I, I can divide, I can always normalize to sum to one. So in these examples, uh, this will be somewhat the case, not completely, um, uh, but throughout the rest of the talk, no. But uh, so anyway, clearly arithmetic average, very easily expressible as a, uh, as a weighted, uh, ordered weighted average. So that's nice since these are supposed to be uh, generalized averages. Now you can get maximum. Just simply take vectors one and zeros, and clearly you get the maximum op operator. You can get minimum, just zeros followed by one. Trivial. You can get a median. You put a one in the middle and zeros back and forth, the median operator works. And you could have, uh, for example, a geometric sequence, starting with one and then p, p squared, p three, p, uh, p four, up to, uh, and here for p equals zero, one, you get a geometric uh, sequence addition. So this, of course, models our uh, expected utility. And I will later show you that there's plenty of other OWA vectors that are actually quite reasonable in our setting. Uh, but I hope that by, by this time, uh, you're convinced that this is at least a reasonable framework, at least something worth looking at. So what can we do with it? What do we get? Uh, well, we define our, uh, what we call an OWA uh, winner problem. So um, I'm a computer scientist. I have to uh, admit, I guess, shamelessly or shamefully, I'm not sure. Uh, but um, so uh, I'm to a large extent interested in deciding how difficult it is to find these objects. So I'm interested in some of their properties as well. Uh, but for this talk, it's mostly about how, how hard it is to find a set of items that will satisfy everyone. Uh, so I assume that uh, I have a set of agents. So th these four guys in the beginning was our set of agents. And you can, you can think of them as really separate people or groups of customers uh, somehow um, taken and you know, whatever, whatever you like. We have a set of items. So the movies that we had were the items available. And we can pick up to K or, or exactly K items that these people will somehow be using together. And the OWA vector, in some sense, describes how they use the items. Uh, so the, the maximum uh, operator OWA1000, it was, as I told you, this corresponds to the chamberlain run rule. It somehow means that everyone gets whatever the best item they think, and, and that's it. If we use this geometric progression, then somehow this models the, the sequence of uh, making choices. I watch one movie, then I'm with some probability I watch the next, and so on and so on. And in fact, one could interpret these OWA operators in, in several ways uh, that I'll mention later when I show you some examples. Uh, so that for further, for each agent, we have this utility function. So each agent has some intrinsic utility of every item, which is then modified by the OWA operator. So intrinsically, each item has a value. But from the process of using their, these, uh, these items, the value gets modified as the OWA says. So for example, with this uh, one zero 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 operator, it means that in fact, I only attach value to my best item because the rest I don't watch. Okay. And the task is simply to compute a set of items C such that the value, the value of the, of the set of items C is this uh, utility of the sum of utilities uh, of uh, all the agents, uh, of this, say, committee of items, so modified by OWA. So I hope it's clear, and if it's not, then stop me. And well, if it's not clear and you don't stop me, then well, there's only so far that my responsibility goes. And uh, the questions that we have is, uh, what's the complexity and what good algorithms can we get? And uh, unfortunately, we're already bound by results known from the literature, uh, which give us the following special cases. So for the, for the, uh, for the uh, vector OWA of all ones, which is essentially the same as this one over, one over K averaging, this is just sum, but this is the same thing. Uh, this is, uh, in voting theory, this is uh, often known as range voting, or sometimes uh, as, uh, uh, as K border or K approval, depending on the nature of utilities of the, of the voters. But this is, this is a very simple setting where all, this is simply summing up the utilities, taking the guys, with the best result. This is easy. The problem is that, as I told you, with the vector 1, 0, 0, 0, this is Chamberlain-Curran's rule. And 
when the utility functions are arbitrary, uh, well, actually, even for very simple utilities, the problem is known to be NP-hard. And for arbitrary utilities, there is no hope of an approximation algorithm with better quality than 0.63. So it means that the best you can hope for with arbitrary utilities is to get 63% of the maximum possible utility. I mean, this is uh, the maximum guarantee that you can hope for. So, of course, if you randomly choose and all of a sudden uh, you satisfy everyone, then, of course, you get that. But uh, we can uh, complexity theory results uh, tell you that uh, we can guarantee 0.63. And uh, unless the world collapses, there is no better guarantee possible in polynomial time. And the word collapses means P equals NP. Um, so these, these are the boundaries that we start from. And um, so, so clearly, we need to somehow uh, constrain ourselves, ourselves. And we look at two kinds of constraints. Uh, first, uh, we pick special utility functions. And these utility functions are either approval utilities. So you can either, either you love something or you hate it. If you love something, you give it utility one. If you hate it, you, or well, at least you don't love it, you give it utility zero. It's worthless to you, or it's worth maximum. Or we can have border utilities, where uh, the utilities come from, uh, from border scoring rule. So they, they essentially, if we have, uh, say, k items, then we have k possible scores from 0, 1, 2, 3, up to k minus 1. Uh, so these are, these are kind of, uh, I'll, I'll mention this a little uh, later, but uh, these are kind of two extreme possibilities for what voter can, th or what agent can think of items. So approval. Uh, agents, they, they have very strict threshold. They think, if I like it, it's great. If it's slightly below my, my requirements, it's completely worthless. So I will only watch good movies, and I will not even try watching anything below my standards. And border utilities are they model people with, with, which have very kind of slowly decreasing level of appreciation for particular items. So I really want to watch my best movie first, if I can't watch my best movies, I can, you know, the, the next best is pretty good as well, and the next one is acceptable, and the next one is so-so, and uh, so they have, they have a spectrum of opinions. So these are sort of opinionated people, and these are kind of peaceful people, I guess. And uh, the results that we get is that, well, essentially, approval utilities are extremely hard to deal with, and border utilities are, well, not that hard to deal with, but still hard. So it means that, in essence, for both these settings, we get NP-hardness results. Uh, but the, there is a real difference in uh, how we deal with, uh, with this hardness, uh, whether we can get approximation or not. So for 0, 1 utilities, for approval, there's next to no hope. So an airline would be perfectly happy to have a, an approximate solution that makes most people mostly happy. And um, we can't have that here. For border utilities, on the other hand, we can get really good, almost perfect uh, approximation algorithms. Uh, depending on the setting a bit, but, uh, but we can get very good results for border. And the next thing we looked at is uh, just classes of different OWA vectors. So a natural first thing to start with is what we call T-best OWAs, where you just you have appreciation for some, you, you watch, let's say you watch your T-best movies. So with t equal 1, it means you just watch your best, and, and that's that. And k best is, of course, the, the, this, this easy example of just summing up utilities. You watch everything there is, and then it, of course, makes sense to sum up utilities. Uh, there's an interesting special case of k minus 1 best, where you watch everything except the worst possible of the, of the set. It's interesting uh, because of its computational properties. Then the next group uh, are movies that or, or OWA vectors that um, we call T-median. T uh, so the T-median is uh, you, you're somehow interested in, your, in the teeth best option. And here, K-median is particularly interesting. So you're actually, somehow you're interested in your worst option. So think, why, why would you ever want to optimize that? Well, if you want to optimize that, it means uh, you're a perfect pessimist. You're traveling with your family, with kids, and you know they will choose the worst possible option. You'll have to watch it. Uh, so you want to optimize against you know, enemies of this sort, so to say. 
Uh, and if that's, if that's the situation you're in, that's, a, that's the kind of the, the pessimist's approach uh, that you should take. That, that these, these OWA vectors are, are your thing then. And of course, you could also look at uh, Hurwicz uh, approach. So Hurwicz uh, modeled um, this form of uncertainty uh, that uh, with uh, kind of belief that maybe you should be to some extent optimist and hope you'll get to see the best thing there is, but you need to reserve this, this pessimistic part that maybe, maybe they'll, they'll, they'll give you the worst possible. Uh, so Hurwicz OWA models this, this kind of this somehow middle ground between an optimist and pessimist. Uh, one best would be a, a perfect uh, optimist, and K-median is the perfect pessimist. Then uh, the next two interesting sequences of OWAs is the geometric OWA. So of course, this is the expected utility model. And arithmetic OWA with a decreasing, slowly decreasing level of appreciation for, uh, well, or level of importance of each item, which actually comes out uh, as an expected utility as well, but in a slightly different model. So I told you that geometric is an expected uh, utility, it models expected utility in the model where you keep on watching movies uh, with some probability. So arithmetic OWA shows up, for example, if you have a model of uh, you uh, uh, the, the probability of watching iMovies is uniformly distributed. So the probability that you watch one movie is the same as the probability that you watch all the movies. And then if you want to take your expected utility, uh, then kind of scaling by, by an arithmetic operator is the, exactly what you should do. And finally, uh, one thing that we focus on, uh, mostly because of their uh, computational properties, are non-increasing OWAs. So this is a wide class that captures that gets t-best uh, and uh, uh, well, geometric for, for p smaller than one, arithmetic. Uh, so we can, we, can, we can deal with them jointly uh, with a relatively simple greedy algorithm. Not very good one, but still at least we can somehow talk, up, talk about them together. And somehow it seems that there's a huge difference between these non-increasing OWAs and ones that are increasing, like, uh, like for example, k-median. And um, this difference is visible in the results. So the results, I told you already that, for, so for k-best, this is, this is well known, this is polynomial time algorithm, easy to deal with. For t-best, uh, it's already np-hard, and it's np-hard even for k minus one best. So the moment you step just a little bit away from summing up the utilities, immediately hardness hits you. So, so approximation algorithms are, are definitely needed here. And it turns out that uh, for this k minus one best, we have a so-called PITAS, polynomial time approximation scheme, which means that if you say, I require approximation up to 1%, this means, okay, I give you a polynomial time algorithm that gives you approximation up to 1%. However, uh, the running time of this algorithm is polynomial in the input, but may be exponential in the approximation ratio. So if you fix the approximation ratio, it's polynomial time, but if you keep changing it, the algorithm might uh, slow down a lot. Uh, here it actually turns out that it's, it's pretty good. And uh, we also have uh, this, this PTAS for Borda also works for T-best. And uh, for K, uh, the, the, but uh, the idea of approximation for K minus one best over is actually very disappointing. Because, so we have a nice uh, algorithm for T-best OWAs, and I'll show you that algorithm actually. And for k minus one best, actually, the, uh, what, what the algorithm does is, okay, it's k minus one best. It really looks pretty much like k best. Let's just run k best and give you that allocation. And this gives you k minus one over k approximation ratio. So for, for large k, this is pretty much perfect. For small k, we can brute force. And um, so we, we get formally a PTAS. And it's a completely disappointing one because if for some reason, you thought that it's good to use k minus one best OWA, and we're giving you a k best result, then you're completely unsatisfied with that. Then to begin, why did you, why did you ask us for the solution to begin with? You would ask yourself. And so, so technically we get a nice result. Practically, this actually is somehow not satisfying. But well, that's the result we have. Uh, so then for, I said, for, the, for the OWAs, which are non-increasing, non uh, the results are essentially no hope for any sort of good approximation. 
We can't, we can't even have this 0.63 approximation I mentioned in the beginning uh, by, from a simple greedy algorithm. It doesn't work here. The, the assumptions of these algorithms are not satisfied. Uh, hopeless. As far as I know, uh, there's no good approximation un, un, unless really weird things happen. And finally, for geometric OWA, we have epitas. And for these non-increasing OWAs, we, we show that this assu the assumptions of this 0.63 greedy algorithm are satisfied, so we can run it, and it's fine, easy enough. OK, so these are the results we get. I mean, all these hardness, all hardnesses hold for border and, uh, and uh, approval, or easy, all easiness hold for border. And well, except with, the, with this one, which, which is general, but disappointing. So one of the natural questions now to ask is what's so special about border utilities that, uh, that, that we get all this easiness? And I sort of already told you that the reason for this easiness in border is that if you imagine a, vec uh, a, a diagram where here you have utility uh, for uh, an item that is ranked first, second, and so on, then border looks linear. So if you don't get your best, you, you're slightly less happy, but you're still happy. So there's a lot of space for somehow negotiating with the agents. So I, maybe I will not give you the best thing, but I'll give you a little, a little worse, and some, many, many other people will be happy, that's fine. On the other hand, for approval, we have this sharp behavior. So, so there's no negotiation whatsoever. If you don't get your best thing, you're unhappy and, and unwilling to, uh, to be consoled in any way. And so what would you do if you had this sort of curve for utilities? Is it, is it more like Borda? Is it more like approval? Will the problem be easy? Will it be hard? It's maybe not immediate to guess what's the result. And actually, it turns out that uh, so we, we came up with uh, some sort of general, general uh, way of expressing what it means, what made Borda utilities easy. So we called it, uh, we called curves like this, x, y, non-finicky uh, utilities. Uh, so this means that if at least fraction x of the items get fraction y of the highest utility, it means you're x, y, non-finicky. It means that you can be satisfied to, to, to some reasonable extent. So if, if x is high and, and and why is high, then this means that uh, these are really easy utilities to work with. You're easily satisfied. Because if you don't get your best thing, there's still a lot of other items that can satisfy you. But of course, if these, if these numbers are low, then, then this, is, uh, this means it's hard to work with you. And um, we're actually, uh, one, uh, one of the main goals of the talks that I give on this topic is to uh, learn if maybe this notion is already known in the literature. Because we, came, we sort of came up with it for, because it, it fitted our proofs. And uh, it took us actually quite some, some, some days uh, to came, come up with the name. None of us is an English speaker. So learning this name involved really some searching through uh, dictionaries. And uh, for some time, we were worried that maybe it's a rude word, but apparently not. Uh, maybe. Um, but uh, the problem is, of course, uh, it's really hard to find a notion when you have the definition, but not the name. So actually, we don't know. Maybe we came up with something new and interesting, and maybe there's a group of people who have been studying it for the last 500 years. And, but so far, no one told us. So that's uh, at least some reassurance. And uh, the, nice, uh, the nice consequence of, our, of well, the way we, we did our results and the, the way we obtained our algorithms is that essentially, all the results that hold for border, all these pitases that hold for border, translate into a nice approximation algorithm for all x, y non-finicky utilities. Uh, so essentially, a pitas translates to a, something like a x minus epsilon uh, approximation algorithm, uh, if you have non-finicky utilities. And you can see that approval, of course, is a non-finicky utility type for a, very, for a very bad set of parameters. But if somehow your voters approve of many items and, and you have good properties of non-finicky, you, you get good enough results even for approval. You know, if everyone is happy with everything, no matter what you do, is great. Uh, as far as trivialities go, at least. Okay, 
so this was, uh, this was, let's say, this, the philosophical part of the talk, or maybe introduction. Uh, now comes, uh, comes the punishment, now comes the proof. Uh, so I want to show you at least some results. And um, the two results uh, I will show you is, first, I, will, I hope I will convince you that finding k minus one best winner under, under approval is computationally hard. And next, I will show you this algorithm for dealing with geometric, um, uh, with geometric uh, OWAs under Borda. So two different settings, two different utility types, uh, how the proofs look like. Uh, okay, so we start with k minus one best OWA, and we'll show it is NP-hard. Okay, so um, for those of you who are not familiar with uh, the theory of NP-completeness and computational hardness, the way such things are done is you start with some original, uh, some, some problem that is, that from some source you know is hard. So here the problem that I'm starting with is called vertex cover. And this is the problem the, of the following type. I'm given a graph, I'm given a number k, and my task is to pick at most k vertices so that every edge is touching at least one of the selected vertices. So in this instance that I'm showing you here on the, on the, on the picture, so uh, if you are worried that I'm showing you proofs, don't worry, these are proofs by examples and by pictures. So uh, in, this, in this graph that I'm using here, uh, there is a vertex cover of size 3. For example, I can, I can pick vertex V2, and V2 covers these four edges. So now it's clear that I have to pick one of two of the remaining ones. So I can pick V5, and it covers two more edges, and I can pick V4, and it covers one more. And now everything is covered. So, it's, so here, this is a so-called yes instance of my problem. And uh, when I'm proving hardness, so, so this problem is known to be NP-hard. So there is, uh, as far as we know, there's no polynomial time algorithm for this problem. And we will translate this to asking, is there a um, committee of size k, or this set of items of size k, uh, under approval utilities for k minus one best OWA vector for some given set of agents? So, our, so we need to translate the question of asking, can I pick a vertex cover of this graph to a problem, can I pick k items that give me a particular utility. So the way I will do it, uh, or the way we will do it, is first, okay, let's give a name to every possible edge. And now uh, we need to, so we need to pick our set of agents and our set of items. We start with the set of items. It's quite easy to think of it that if we are picking uh, vertices here, then maybe our items should be vertices, okay? And our agents will be the edges. So edge one, connecting V1 and V2, will have utility one for V1, utility one for V2, and utility zero everywhere else. And you can see that all these edges, all these edge agents, are made in the same way. So E6, E6 is here, connects V3 and V5, so gives utility one for V3 and V5. Okay, simple enough. Uh, but that's not all. I'm also, I also need somehow competing uh, or com completing agents, which are called G guys. So they are G1 through Gn, and they're complements of the guys uh, from uh, the previous group. So E1 was 11000, G1 is 00111. They're, made they're always made this way. And now I claim that uh, if, there is, um, if there is a vertex cover of size k for these guys, then there will be a uh, a way to pick three items that give the maximum possible utility of uh, k times n, where k is here three and n is seven. Why is that? So let's see, let's see what happens when we pick a correct vertex cover. So I pick v2, I get these utilities. I pick v4, I get these. I pick v5, okay? And now let's analyze the utilities that these guys obtain. So e1, gets utility one plus zero plus zero times the k minus one best OWA. So, he get, so E1 gets one plus zero, and he, uh, here every agent gets just top k minus one, so top, top two points. So E1 gets one point, right? And G1, well, he has zero, one, one, he gets these two ones. 
So he gets two, two plus one is three, he gets three. And this is true for all of them. Uh, it, it will become clear why this is the, so this is the case uh, because we had a vertex cover. So whenever uh, we had a pair of these guys, uh, there was always at least one of the one of the uh, one of the uh, pink groups was was a one. Uh, so uh, we know that uh, if if there was just one one if it was uh, say if it was one zero zero let's see if we have example like that yes we have one zero zero so the other one was one zero one so it must be three because you get top two things if you had uh, if you had one one zero, which is uh, uh, let's see, it's for example here one one zero. So you get two from the top guy, one from the you get three. And of course, you cannot have one 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 uh, from any of them because well, e one the e eyes don't have three ones, and for the other ones that would mean that uh, one of them gets zero. However, to see why this is exactly, uh, let's see uh, what if I chose wrong. What if I chose a wrong set of items? So this simulates uh, the case where there is no vertex cover. So if I choose V3, V4, and V5, clearly I'm missing E1. So now uh, E1 gets 0, 0, 0, and G1 gets 1, 1, 1. But we are using K minus 1 best. So E1 gets 0, but G1 gets only 2. So K minus 1, which, and all the other guys here get 3, but still I'm getting utility K and minus 1. So I can get my maximum possible utility only if, which is here k times n, only if there is a vertex cover. So is it clear? OK, at least to some extent. Um, so of course, this, this is written technically, and, um, but, but I hope this, this explains the idea behind the proof. Uh, OK, and this stays NP-complete for border utilities. And uh, at the price of uh, serious pain and suffering, uh, because this proof, uh, writing it up, takes half a page. Writing this proof for Borda takes three pages. And uh, there's a lot of technical stuff that one has to deal with. But basically, the same idea holds. Uh, so after we've done this hardness uh, for Borda, we decided not to do others, but uh, it's certain they hold. OK, so this was the, the example of hardness for approval. So let's do easiness for Borda for geometric. And the way we do that, actually, to give you the algorithm, we have to go back in time, and we have to go back to our joint paper with uh, uh, Arkady and uh, one of uh, the co-authors of this paper, which started from doing epitas for border utilities for one best OWA. So how do, if, if all I care is watching my one best movie, how do I do that? The algorithm is actually very simple. So imagine you have a profile, so here you have uh, voters V1, V2, Vn, which I, I apologize for it being confusing with the vertices. Now they are voters here, or agents, or whatever you call them. And each of them has ranks 1, 2, 3, M. So each of them puts a permutation of items uh, on uh, right here. And you have to imagine that. I, I will not show this. Uh, this um, but for example, if you, if you rank someone, if you like someone best, you put this guy here. And since it's border utilities, this, this, this item gets minus one points. Then the next one gets minus two, next one minus three, and down to zero. OK? Clear now. So our task is to pick k items in a way that somehow maximize utilities of these n guys, uh, n agents. So how do we do it? We start with the initializ initialization step which the step at first, it already starts with telling you forget about most of this information, it's useless. Uh, so we compute a number which is called x, which is m, number of the candidates, number of items, times wk over k, where wk is Lambert's w function, which essentially uh, you can think of it as a logarithm. It's a slightly slow, more slowly uh, growing function than logarithm. Um, uh, it's a solution to, uh, to uh, uh, let's see, Ah, oh, never mind. It's, it's just slightly more slowly growing logarithm. So we compute this number, and we say everything, everything in the profile up to below this, this rank is completely worthless. We don't look at these things. We don't consider it not important. Of course, this means that maybe we'll not get optimal solution, but that's fine. We're after approximation. And we have much less stuff to think about. And now, what, uh, what we do in the algorithm is in the loop, we keep picking 
a candidate that appears in the available part. So the available part currently is the top of the profile uh, most frequently. And we just keep on doing that until we run out of the K guys. So for example, if let's say I, I showed you some of these top K uh, t most frequently appearing guys in the beginning of the profile. So for example, you, you see here some, some weird thing with large teeth and this shows up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven times. So probably by far the most. So if we pick this big thing with teeth, it, is, it becomes one of our winners and these parts of the profile become unavailable. So they already got there. So we know that uh, whoever comes in this part gets at least this value X or M minus, at least this value M minus X. And we've, we've used up these voters and now we continue. Now it seems that uh, the next item that shows up most frequently is apparently a vampire, which shows up four times. So we pick the vampire and we get another slot. And let's say if we still have one more guy to pick, then well, we have a choice between the devil and the Frankenstein. We choose the Frankenstein and we're done. So this is our, this would be our, com our committee of representatives. And as you can see, maybe they will not fulfill this whole space. That's fine. But by, uh, by essentially pigeonhole principle, uh, one can show that uh, there, will be a uh, there will be a lot of items here that, uh, that fulfill a lot of these slots. Uh, so essentially this, uh, this parameter X is picked in such a way as to make this pigeonhole principle argument optimal. And we're guaranteed that the total utility under border utilities will be N times M minus one times, times this, this function. And N times M minus one would be the utility of, uh, for the case if we pick items that are always ranked first. There are N agents, each of them gives M minus one points to the top item. So N times M minus one is the best possible imaginable set of items they could ever get. So if we forget about this part, essentially the, the, what remains is the approximation ratio. And this is one minus two times WK over K, where W is this Lambert's function, essentially logarithm. Uh, so that means it's a really, this function really quickly gets to one. So uh, in fact, uh, the approximation ratio, if, you, if, we show a, if we show it on a diagram, you can see this, you can hardly even see this function. Uh, so for committee of size 100, you're already at 90% approximation ratio. And what is nice, this algorithm actually guarantees this level of uh, uh, satisfaction, irrespective of how voters, how agents rank the items. So if, if we're picking 100 movies, out of whatever, we're guaranteed that uh, we'll pick uh, movies such that you will like one of them more than 90% of other movies. No matter what, this is simply a fact of life. Uh, okay, so this is a very nice thing. And this is the building block. So now uh, the next building block is, we said we wanted geometric uh, OWA. So now we'll say that we have a PITAS for OWA winner border utilities, but fixed number of top non-zero positions in the OWA vector. So just, just the beginning top T positions have something interesting, everything else is zero. And it, it's easy to show that we can essentially use the same algorithm to, uh, to compute the solution of this problem. So now, now, I can, now here you have an example of a profile. So we're somehow picking, a, you know, now the items have become people and maybe you're choosing a parliament or something like that. Um, and the main idea is that, uh, so we, we, have K, we have K winners to pick, and we only have non-zero values for T entries in the OWA vector. So we will select T groups of K over T winners, and we will use that PITAS algorithm from, well, here's from literature, but actually from previous slide. So the way it works, it, so it computes this X value, looks at the front of the profile only, and the algorithm guarantees to find some group, some, some K over T items that more or less satisfy a large fraction, fraction of this top profile. And then we can keep on repeating that. Then we look, then we repeat the same process for the next group, but looking at the second group of X uh, preferences. And then you're again guaranteed a smaller group that appears in both places. And if you do it T times, you have these T groups, smaller and smaller, but actually uh, the, the decrease in size is slow. 
So essentially the same sort of uh, the same reasoning as before uh, says that this is, uh, this is this gives us the p test. Okay, is the idea clear? Yeah. So since we have t non-zero items, you get uh, for each of these guys in the final block, you have t candidates that get non-zero utilities, and that's nice. So you can ask, okay, but, but I wanted geometric of WA, and it is it has more than uh, t non-zero items. It has all non-zero items. That's fine, because of course, if p is smaller than one, which is exactly the case of probabilities, we simply forget about everything until after the teeth entry. It's you know, if p is 0.1, then very even even for t equal three or four, you're already not getting anything meaningful there anyway. So this way, you can use exactly this algorithm to get your geometric solution, and that's very nice. Unfortunately, we do not have many other algorithms for many other settings. So, for example, for the arithmetic OWA, no result, unclear. And uh, the summary is that uh, we have a new general family. Well, here I'm writing of multi-winner elections, because if we think of this as either form of approval election or for Borda, we can general we generalize. Uh, essentially, we generalize k Borda rule. We generalize chamberlain courant We provide some. We could we could for any any OWA vector defines a new rule or any OWA vector plus the set of utilities allowed define a new voting rule. And it, in fact, it turns out that we actually even model things that we didn't think of. So there is something called proportional approval voting, PAV, which is defined by, by uh, you could say, harmonic OWA. Uh, so one half, one third, one fourth, and so on, with approval utilities. And f actually, from our results, it follows that there's an NP hardness, even if each agent approves at most two candidates and each candidate is approved by at most three voters. So this is a pretty strong NP hardness result. Uh, there are more details about this in uh, recent other papers. So this whole multi-winner thing is now somehow growing to be an important topic in computational social choice. Uh, but in general, we have very broad NP hardness results. Uh, we have examples of approximation results, which are nice. It's somehow clear that this class of voting rules based on OWAs is important and useful. And now, actually, a big chunk of my visit here uh, with Nimrod and with Arkady was to re understand to what extent and how. And well, thank you, and that's it. Questions? Your seminar. There are um, uh, several issues here. Well, the first issue that we have is that it's notoriously hard to choose uh, key uh, items. Uh, well, in whatever model. Uh, and there are so many different models uh, where we would like to do that. But in the flight, you can watch three movies, for 
you're not, well, you can you have hundred more reasons for the things. You can watch only three because like six hours of each will be two hours. So you know, even when you need uh, play movies as some of the uh, utilities or maybe your necessary choices, maybe you will some maybe you some. And another, uh, another model that is also hidden here is that uh, we are choosing to set, but uh, some I'm not allowed to choose my text. Someone else will uh, allocate uh, 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 an option for me. So if I'm an optimist, uh, I judge uh, the collection of objects uh, would be my best object. I hope so. I will be my best object. Pessimistic order uh, looks at the worst possible, fearing the worst. And um, in, in general, it's very common in economics to think that um, um, consumers judge the set of objects uh, looking at the best choice and the worst choice. And all these, uh, all these scenarios uh, fall into this. Uh, That's why it is so um, so general. But uh, as I said about virtually, uh, virtually um, uh, only few scenarios uh, allows us uh, to calculate this set of objects of non set of objects uh, simply for a common time. So if you are able to consume all of these objects, and you judge subsets and sets of utilities, then yes, we can do it. We can do it for the number of time. But if you, if you can assume only k minus 1, but the last one, then it's a very hard <coughs> Suddenly, hard disappears. So, hard disappears virtually in all models of choice of k objects. We would call them multi they uh, raise many more And that's what, that's why, because whenever you go, you need hard complexity. Mm -hmm. That's why approximation algorithms uh, are interesting to look at. So you cannot get optimal, absolutely best uh, choice of object, but maybe you can have reasonable. Such a species that uh, one of the, so you are not optimizing, but such a species. Um, and, and so, uh, um, this is a very, uh, uh, very uh, good paper because, as I said, um, without mentioning uh, any particular uh, framework, where simple answer you can't uh, you simply it, the problem is so complicated that you have to you have to compromise something so that was the that, that's the point of compromise so if, if it was a company running it they would pro they almost certainly have some some heuristics uh, different OWAs for different group of people and um, so that, that that's a simple answer 
Actually, uh, yeah, yeah. But there's, but I said exactly. There are ca there are cases where people may want to have. So if 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 I'm choosing a parliament, of course I want to have ten representatives rather than one. I'll have more voting power. But I'm only allowed to have one. So so to to somehow sometimes you need. It's useful to express that. Yeah, yeah. So so I would say it's. So, so again, I would I would add that this is. This paper, to a large extent, is based uh, on computer science perspective. That means we want to achieve something. So if we make our model even more complicated, we get even more hardness results. That that's you know. So the, so the starting point for this kind of work was probably from Chamberlain Courant and uh, a lot of early, uh, I mean, inspiration and early work uh, of Arkady. And uh, this generalized it a, a bit, allowing more more, but uh, but we certainly did not get the full generality. And uh, this, this question of having individual OWA vectors always arises. And I, the, the best answer is yes, it would be great to have it. And, uh, but the problem 